Hi everyone, in this video, you discover an easy way to manage your color palettes in your Elementor website. If that's something that interests you, then stick around and we'll jump right into it. In this tutorial, I'll be using five core plugins for maximum flexibility, but don't worry, I'll be mentioning alternatives as we go along. So now let's look at the first one, which is Elementor and Elementor Pro as my page builder for creating the layout. Then I'll be using ACF to create the dynamic colors for my posts and my taxonomy. You can use alternatives like Jet Engine, Pods, Metabox, and there are so many other ones. Then to pull in the dynamic data into Elementor in a flexible way, I'll be using a new plugin called Dynamic Shortcodes is quite powerful. It allows you to use any kind of dynamic content within any page builder. So that's what I'll be using in this example. Then I'll also be using a CSS framework called Core Framework. You don't really need a framework. You can write your CSS within your style sheet on your child theme, but I'll be using Core Frameworks because it makes managing colors very easy. I'll show you in a moment. Then for other extra CSS and JavaScript, I'll be using WP Codebox, but you can always easily add it directly into your Elementor page builder or into your child theme, or you can use a code CPS plugin. So those are the five things we'll be using. So now let's jump right into the first example. But before we begin, I just want to mention that this video is addressing bugs which are found in Elementor, and I'm hoping will be fixed in a future update. So now let's start with the basic use case in this example, I just want to pull in dynamic background overlay colors for each of my post loop items, because this is a post loop. And then I want each of the post loop items to have a unique background overlay color. So like maybe one will have a purple tint, then a dark blue tint or something like that. So for this, I've created two ACF color picker fields. So the first one is just called primary underscore color, then secondary underscore color. Now you think that this is quite easy to do in Elementor, but Imran in one of his videos, which I'll link to in the description below, he mentioned that using ACF color meta fields, it tends to be a bit hit and miss with Elementor. But now I'll be using the dynamic shortcodes plugin that allows us to pull in dynamic data into Elementor or even Gutenberg or whatever page builder you're using in a more efficient way. So let me go ahead and show you how I'll do it in Elementor. So here we have the templates. Let me go ahead and edit it. And within the template, all I have is a container, then another container just to wrap my text. It's actually not necessary, but just to prove this example, that's what I'm doing it this way. So for this container, I want to apply a background overlay using that color picker field, which is the primary color. So I'll go, I want to use overlay. The reason why we're using overlay is because it allows us to apply opacity. So let me do that and then for the color you can ordinarily choose either global colors here or you want to choose a random color here but if you notice there is this dynamic tag so you can actually pull in dynamic data so that's what we're doing in this video so i'll pull in the dynamic data rather than picking the acf color picker field people have already mentioned that it's a bit buggy so I'll use the dynamic shortcodes. Let me choose that. Now click on the wrench icon. Now I just have to define the shortcode. Ordinarily with normal shortcodes, you use the square braces, but with dynamic shortcodes, you use the curly braces. So I'll open it up. I'm trying to pull in the field from my post, but since it's an ACF field, to make it more flexible, I'll use ACF. You can also just write post, it will work but ACF is more targeted toward ACF fields. Then I'll put the column and the field I'm trying to pull in data from is called primary color. So I'll say primary underscore color. Then the next thing is that I'll apply a fallback, which makes it more flexible in this case. With other ones, you don't have the option to apply fallbacks, but with this one, you can apply a fallback just using the question mark symbol. And then I'll put a string so I'll open it with either single or double quotes. And then I'll just say hash, maybe 
991919 in this example. And then I'll close the curly braces and it should pull in a color. So now it's pulling in the color. Right now it's pulling it the one for the first example. But once I exit, you're going to pull in the correct data for all the rest of them. So now let me save this and do save and back. And there we have it. Each of them have their different colors. Let me show on the front end. Each of them have different colors. One is dark. There's a tint here, another tint, and so on and so forth. It also has a purple tint. And you can see it in the example. Let me come here and go to the field, which is called people. Then you can see each of them. This is the name, maybe Jacob. It has this black and then the red. Most of them, I left them as all red for the secondary color. So now those are the examples and that's how it's pulling in this color. So now let's go to the second use case, which will also show you another bug in Elementor. So now let me go back and edit the template. Now what if we want to apply a gradient background color? So now go back to this loop. Let me go to the content wrapper. And this time, the same thing, overlay. But rather than choosing the classic color, I want to choose the gradient color. Let me choose gradient. So I already have my first color there. The second color is red. So let me now choose the second meta field. So go there again, dynamic tag, dynamic short codes. Choose the wrench icon, open the color brace, say ACF. Then secondary underscore color, question mark, put the fallback, just hash, maybe this time I'll say 131313, three, three. then close, that's my second color. So you see it's pulling in the color from the post in the back end. So now let me publish it. But now let's preview it on the front end that you see what happens. I get an error because Elementor is not pulling the data properly. So it's creating an error. So that's one problem I found with Elementor. It doesn't pull in dynamic data properly for the background overlay. But luckily, we can do a workaround. So now let me just remove all of these. Or maybe just copy the colors because I may need it later. Then delete all of these, go back to classic and remove it. So now rather than applying it here as a background overlay, we'll apply it using custom CSS, but we'll still reference that dynamic data. So let me go to the advanced tab, come over to custom CSS. We'll be applying everything ourselves. So I'll say selector, and then I'll apply it to the after pseudo element. So after, first I have to declare a content. Then I'll say maybe position absolute. So I can fill the entire container. Then I'll just do an inset of zero. So I'll do it the long form way. So set so top zero, right zero, bottom zero, and then left zero. Then to make sure that it's working, I'll just say background red. So you see it's working. So now I'll apply the primary color as the background color. Then I'll apply the primary and the secondary color as the gradient. It's always good to apply a fallback background color before you apply the gradient. So I'll say, I'll be using a trick here. First, I will apply them as CSS variables. Then I'll now define that CSS variable inside a custom attribute. So that's the trick I'm using here. So let me see the background. See var the uh, primary color. Then I'll give it a fallback, which is maybe one for one for one for just one example. Let me put an opacity like we typically have in the Elementor UI settings. So now we have this setup. Then we want to also apply the linear gradient now. So I'll see rather than using background, I should use background color to be more specific. Then I now say background this time, a linear gradient. 
and then I'll choose the first color and the second color. The first color is the primary, valve, DD, ELR primary, with the same fallback of 141414, then a comma outside it, and do again for the secondary color, VAR, DD, secondary color, and then apply the fallback. This time I'll say hashtag 191919, and then I have to make sure I put the colon. So we have everything all set up. Maybe this is not good enough. Let me put 99 so that it's easy to see. So now I have our linear gradient. So now what we do is apply the dynamic tag in the attribute section so that for each individual item, it will use the style tag to apply a different CSS variable. So let me show what I mean. Go to the attributes. You choose the dynamic tags. And then you could literally still use ACF field here. But like I said in the former example, you cannot apply a fallback and that will now break things when there is no color because one thing about CSS variables is that once you've defined it inside your loop, it breaks the color if there is no color attached to that variable. That's why these dynamic shortcuts come into play because you can apply a fallback. So in case this ACF field doesn't have a color, the default back takes precedence and then that will now still show something up because once the value is blank, it breaks the entire thing. So let me go to the dynamic shortcodes, the event icon, and this time, first start under the advanced tab and the before section, write style and the pipe symbol. This will be translated to style equal to on the front end. So now, what we have to down do is we declare those variables. So the first one was dd primary color. Put a colon, and then I just we declare that variable. So we just paste it, which is the primary color. Then put the colon. We can now declare the second one, double hyphen dd secondary color. I'll apply it again. I'll just say maybe one for one for one for something like that. So let me say one for one for one for. Then changes from primary color to secondary color. And that's it. So let me close it. And this is the next problem with Elementor. Dynamic attributes don't show up in the back end only in the front end. So now publish it. And let's preview if it works on the front end. You see, it works. The first one had black and red. This one has this color because I think I didn't set any color for them. So that's why they just picked the random color that I chose for the both of them. And then the others have different colors I set. And they're all working out. So let me show you what I mean. So for, let's say, Grace. Let me come here, look for Grace. See, the colors are black and red, I think. Let me close this one up. This was the first time when I was searching. Now, this is it. So, there's the grace. It has some form of black and red. It's an out purple. That's for David and red. So, let's go back. For David, it has purple and red. So, everything works. So, that is a workaround for dynamic gradient colors using dynamic shortcodes. The next use case is pulling in dynamic taxonomy colors into our post loop grid. In a previous video, which I will link to in the description below, I talked about how it is currently not natively possible to pull in dynamic taxonomy colors into our post loop grid. You have to use a workaround like creating your own shortcode or using a third party plugin, which I will show you an example in this video. So for this video, we'll be using dynamic shortcodes again to pull in dynamic taxonomy colors. But let me show you where the color I already created using ACF. It is called label underscore BG. It's a color picker field and it's attached to the event location taxonomy. And that taxonomy is attached to the events post type. Let me show you. This is the events. These are all the events. They are attached to the event location. 
each of the event location let me show you a coventry it has a purple color you go back then maybe lincoln that has like a red color and so on and so forth so now we want to pull in these colors into our post loop grid so now let me go back to the post loop let me go ahead and edit it don't worry, it's pulling the color from the first one and showing it on all the other loops. But when you exit, it goes back to the actual colors. So for this example, you will notice that I'm using the dynamic shortcode to even pull in the post info. You'll be wondering why I'm not using the native Elementor's post info widget. I'll show you now. Let me click on the plus icon. Go to the post info. And then I'll just delete all the items. Change the type from author to terms and then choose the taxonomy which is event locations and you see we get the same thing the Lincoln and the Lincoln but I'm instead using dynamic shortcodes to pull in even the name of the term the reason is that the Elementor post info widget it adds all those items into a ULLI kind of structure but I'm only looking for one item here which is just the post term so it doesn't make sense for a screen reader user to be hearing list with one item and then just name it one item that doesn't make sense it is not necessary to be in a list that's why with the dynamic short codes it makes it easy that i can pull in dynamic data from anywhere and let me show you how easy it is so let me click on this and delete this one so click on the this is just a heading widget i'm using here so all i'm doing now is let's click on the event icon I started by opening the short code and then I said I want to get the name of the term but there are so many terms we need to get the specific ID of the first item within the post terms so that's why I'm saying the ID to make it very specific is with pulling all the array of the post terms from the post then I'm narrowing it down to just the event location taxonomy and finally, I'm saying, okay, I just want the first item. That's why I put a double pipe symbol to say I want to access the first item, which is zero. Because in arrays, the first item is actually giving the number zero. So that's what I'm doing here. Then finally, I put in a fallback. So in case it doesn't find any value, just write general. Or you can just write unknown country or something like that. So that will show up if that term is not attached to any post. So let's say I have a post and I forgot to attach a term, it will just default to this default value. So that's one good thing about the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin. So it's the same concept I'm using even for the colors. Let me show you. For the color, let me go to the Style tab. Oh no, the Advanced tab, that's where the background color is. Go on to Background. And the same thing I'm doing, I choose Classic. Choose the dynamic tags and I choose dynamic shortcodes. And if you click on the wrench icon, it's basically the same principle. I'm saying I want to get the label underscore BG meta field from the term. But I want to get it from a specific term. So that's why I have to give it an ID. The ID is I'll first pull in all the array of the post terms. There are a lot of them. Then put the add symbol. I'm trying to now dial it down. Say, okay, I want it from the event location taxonomy and then I just want the first item if it doesn't get that item then just display this red color for me so that's why it's displaying a red color and then that's it so now when we go back publish it save and back we get all of these colors and if for whatever reason I forgot to attach a color to that meta field it will now display that red color for me and that's how simple and easy it is to pull in dynamic taxonomy colors you don't have to write any php you don't have to write any javascript or anything all you have to do is just follow the logic say i'm trying to get the post term the name or the meta field then how do i get the specific term then you now write just keep following the logic which i'll be explaining more in depth in future videos so that's it for the next use case now for the final use case which has got me really excited and it actually prompted me to create this video 
That is easy color management system. One of the bugbears I've had with Elementor is how they name their CSS variables. So it makes it hard to manage colors within Elementor. And I spoke with Maxim, with Sir, how to create a light mode, dark mode kind of system. It becomes very hard. But now with core framework and dynamic shortcodes, I can create my dark mode, light mode system with ease. But what happens? So right now, this is the light mode part of the website. And let me just scroll back up and then change the theme to the dark mode. And see, everything just switches automatically to the dark mode system. I didn't have to do much work and everything just works out nicely for me. So how did I create this? All I have to do is, let me show you, is two plugins. First one is Core Framework, which is actually free. You don't have to purchase it. But if you're using a different page builder like Bricks or Oxygen, you can buy their add-ons, which will now show their variables within the UI. But for this, we're just using the default Gutenberg version. And all I have to do is define my colors. So I defined the color for the light mode and the dark mode. They generate colors for you, but sometimes you may have to tweak it yourself. So I generated some colors for light mode, dark mode. You can maybe use ChatGPT to help you out to create those light mode, dark mode colors. But basically, these are the color variables. And then we'll be referencing these variables within the Elementor page builder, which is the cool bit I'm going to show you now. Let me go back. And then I'll switch this back to the light mode just so we can see everything nicely. Then let me edit the page. So remember in my previous examples, I showed you how to use the dynamic shortcodes to pull in dynamic data, but that actually opens up something which I didn't even realize until later that let's go to, for example, maybe this, and then under the style tab for the border, you see, I used dynamic shortcodes to pull in the color. That is the important bit here. So if you go to the wrench icon, Normally, we're supposed to pull in the shortcodes, but you can actually pull in any kind of data you want there. So that's why I'm using the variable to so var ddclr primary 80. So that now pulls in CSS variables within the builder. And that is why it's so cool, because literally you do it everything within this core framework and don't have to do any work within the builder. Everything just done within the core framework. You can set all your colors, set your fonts, everything here, and then just pull them using the CSS variables and the class names into Elementor, and then they will work perfectly for you. And that is a win for me. So this is it. So it is quite easy. So let me even show you an example. Let's say for this section now, I want to give it a background color. So I'll just go to the style tab, go to the background, choose the colors. Rather than choosing one of the global colors here, you just choose the dynamic tags, dynamic shortcode, go in there, and then I'll now reference my variable to var. You can say dd clr secondary, just for a test. And see, I get my secondary color. And it looks however it looks. It may not look as nice to you, or it may look nice to you. It all depends on you. But basically, this is how I can use CSS variables here. The only downside I've found with this is that there was a bug again, which I'm going to show you now. I already reported it in the Elementor GitHub. Uh, hopefully, they fix it. So I was trying to be clever and say, let's even take it a step further. And rather than having to stress myself multiple times, having to go in here, choose the dynamic tags, dynamic shortcodes, and trying to pull in the color. So let me see, var, let me use that color again. CLR, secondary, uh, 20%. So it just is 20% tint, then, what I was trying to now do is 
save this as a global color, but unfortunately, Elementor does not work well with that. So let me show you what I mean. So I'll go over to site settings, then global colors, and rather than using this color, Elementor allows you to have dynamic tags. It shows dynamic tags here. If I click on it, see I can pull in post custom field. I can pull in even jet engine fields or dynamic U fields. But once I try to set anything there, let me see, even just a, an actual color. So let's see, one, four, one, four, one, four. Save it. Exit to the site settings. And let me pull in the color here. You would see the color style tab, uh, background color, choose it. It actually shows the one for one for one for that I choose. It works in the editor, but let me publish it now and show you on the front end. Notice it doesn't work. So basically it works in the back end but not at the front end. I'm not sure why. Same thing with the linear gradient. They work on the back end, but they don't work on the front end. So those are the things that I need Elementor to fix. Once Elementor fix those things, that will just make my day because I'll be able to now use dynamic colors. I'll be able to use my CSS variables and anywhere within my page, just pull in those CSS variables the same way I do it in Bricks, in Gutenberg and any other place. And now I'll be able to do it within Elementor. So hopefully, I'll leave links. You can go and sort out those bug reports and add your comments to those bug reports. I'll leave them in the description below. And hopefully, Elementor can sort those out and we'll be able to get things moving. So thanks for watching. I know I was not actually teaching much in this video, but hopefully you learned something from the video. And hopefully, you go and get Dynamic Shots Codes plugin and Core Frameworks plugin and start using CSS frameworks within your build to make your build more maintainable and until next time enjoy bye